Today is an updated tutorial on how to install Tortoise TTS locally, but for those of you who aren't familiar with Tortoise TTS, I'm going to run through a quick demo. And so here are a few sentences that I'm going to generate audio for with some models that I've trained. So let's go ahead and take a listen. The men gazed at him with scorn and contempt as Subaru appraised them. They appeared to be in their mid-twenties. Their clothes were filthy and it was as though their inner evil had manifested on their faces. They weren't subhuman, but they couldn't be called decent humans either. Damn, a compulsory event. Facing the grinning man, Subaru wiped his face and stood up in a panic. All right, and so with that, I'm going to jump into the tutorial. For this tutorial, you don't need Python or VS Code on your computer. All you're going to need to download is 7-zip. And also, you need to make sure that you have an NVIDIA GPU. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, unfortunately, this tutorial and package will not work for you. Uh, head on over to 7-zip, and you're going to want to download this Windows executable file, and then run and install 7-zip on your, on your computer. And then you can head on over to my GitHub right here. So this is the AI voice cloning repository that I took from the Git Ecker page. I just uploaded all of the files and then added HiFi GAN into this repository because the original author, I believe, is on some type of hiatus. So I went ahead and uploaded it to GitHub to keep it alive and to do any changes to make sure it can keep on running. So if you click on this link here, it'll bring you to the original repository. But let's go ahead and jump into installation. So what you need to do is go to this releases area, click on the AI voice cloning link, and then you're going to have to download it from Hugging Face. So click on Hugging Face. And in here, you're going to want to download this package. So this package is going to be pretty big. Um, after it's done being unzipped, it's going to be about 20 to 22 gigabytes because of all of the models that I have already put inside of this package. So this may take a couple of hours to download. And after you finish downloading it, you want to go to the folder, navigate to it, and you should have 7-zip here. So you want to go to 7-zip and then do extract files and then um, wherever you want to put it, I'm just going to leave it into this folder. So this is going to take a little bit of time as well. And once it's done downloading, you can head on into the folder. What I'm going to do is control X this to cut it and paste it so that it's just one level above. So here we are now when I click into it, it's right there. And once you're in here, all you need to do is go to start.bat and it should start up. So you're going to see a terminal window open and then a link is going to pop up. So these errors don't really mean anything because we don't need those for Tortoise TTS in this case. Um, everything is going to load here, but here is your local URL. So what you can do is hold control and then left click it and then it's going to open up in Chrome. If not, all you need to do is simply just type out this address and it'll bring you to this page. That is all you need to do to get Tortoise TTS installed. And this one is enabled with Hi-Fi GAN and Deep Speed as well. So what those are, are some features that allow the model to run a little bit faster for inference. So if you want to turn on those, you can head over to the settings tab here, and then you do deep speed for speed bump, and then you do hi-fi GAN instead of diffusion. So hi-fi GAN's quality may be a little bit lower, but the output of it will be much, much faster. So. With that, um, if you've checked these, you need to restart the uh, GUI. So to do that, just go ahead and click Reload TTS here. So what that's going to do is it's going to um, restart this uh, program here. And then you, what you want to do is wait until it says Loaded TTS Ready for Generation. So let's wait until we see that, okay? And so once it's finished loading, uh, we can now head on over into the Generate tab. And then we can generate a quick sample. So in this, we have a random voice. We're just going to use random for now. With that, let's go ahead, click generate, and it's going to generate an audio sample. So that generated pretty quick. Let's go ahead, get a longer sample. All right, I put a new sentence in here. So I'm going to generate, and it'll come out in about one second for five seconds of audio with my 4090. The longer the text, the faster the um, output to time ratio tends to be. So let's go ahead, play this. The men gazed at him with scorn and contempt as Subaru appraised them. They appeared to be in their mid-twenties. So that is pretty good. And if you want to change it back to the diffusion model, uh, what you need to do is head on over into settings and then unclick use HiFi again instead of diffusion. And then once again, click on reload TTS. So 
this window is now going to go ahead and restart. As you can see, it's going here. We'll wait until it says loaded TTS. Alrighty, it's finished loading the TTS. So we can now head on over into generate. And um, in this case, it's going to take quite a bit of time um, to generate. So this one takes about seven seconds. Uh, because I have samples set at 16. So if you turn off Hi-Fi GAN, um, you can use all of these different settings here. The ones that affect speed are samples and iterations. Iterations kind of affects how long it takes linearly, and then samples is kind of exponential. So if I put it at 2 and then scroll down to generate um, for samples at 2 and iterations at 50, this one is going to take about 3 seconds. So let's listen to this. The men gazed at him with scorn and contempt as Subaru appraised them. They appeared to be in their mid-twenties. All right, and so since that is a random voice, the output of it is going to be random each time. But the cool thing about Torch TTS and why I like it a lot is that you can use it for voice cloning. So let's go ahead and throw in a new voice. And so I won't be going over how to actually curate an entire data set. I do have a video right here. Um, I'll be going over some brief training things later on in the video today but I'm gonna just grab a sample from a data set that I've already curated. All right, and with that, to add a voice, uh, what you need to do is get some audio clips. I have five short audio clips. They're all less than five seconds. Um, I just go ahead and copy these. And then I head over into the um, AI voice cloning folder where you go into voices. And then in here, you wanna create a name. So in this case, I'm gonna do new, and do folder. And then in this case, I'm just gonna say Melina. Uh, this is Melina from Elden Ring, and I'm going to now paste those audio samples into here. So with that, you can now refresh the voice list in the Gradio interface, and it'll pick up that voice. So this is without training. What this is is zero shot inference. So it's taking those clips from that audio folder, creating latents, and then generating audio for the sentence here based on those latents. And so um, if we select Melina here, um, we can now go ahead and generate. So I'm going to click generate and what it's going to do is create some diffusion latents. And if you take a look inside of the folder, I now have a PTH file um, and these are the conditioning latents. So let's go ahead and now take a listen. The men gazed at him with scorn and contempt as Subaru appraised them. They appeared to be in their mid-twenties. Alrighty, so if you kind of know how Melina's voice sounds, that is generally close. Let's go ahead and now compare it with Hi-Fi GAN. So I'm going to go ahead and do use Hi-Fi GAN instead of Diffusion. I'm going to click on Reload TTS. Now that TTS is loaded, I can go ahead and click Generate. And what you're going to end up running into is this error. So what happened? Well, what ends up happening is that there is some latent mismatch between the Hi-Fi GAN model and then the Diffusion model. So what you have to do is click this Recompute Voice Latents. So click on Recompute Voice Latents, and then now we can do Generate. I wasn't in the mood to completely automate that process, so I just created a error so that uh, you could click on this button that's already here. So sorry about that. Now that is done, you can just click Generate, and then it'll generate the audio sample. So let's take a listen. The men gazed at him with scorn and contempt as Subaru appraised them. They appear to be in their mid-twenties. Alrighty, and that is not too bad. So those are the basics of inference for the voice cloning. If you want to voice clone with just some samples for zero shot um, inference, but what I'm going to show you next is how to train a voice. And once again, I'm not going to show it entirely how to get a data set, just how the process works once you do have your data set. So luckily, you don't need to split the data set super, super carefully if you don't want to. But I do advise that you do go take out, take a look at this video right here um, to get a feel of how data set curation kind of works. And it's kind of the same process I use with RVC. So that's what that video is for. But let's say that you just have one long um, YouTube video, say like this video right here. Oh. Um, this is me. This is one of my videos. Uh, what you want to do is extract any background music from the vocals. So an easy way to do that is head on over um, to Ultimate Vocal Remover and download this uh, application, UVR. And so what you can do is just scroll down to the um, Windows mirror here and then install it via the installation executable there. And then once you have it, uh, what you can do is select the MDX and then yours will be on somewhere like uh, UVR MDX net. 
and then we can just extract the vocals with this. So the easiest way to do that is put two windows side by side, UVR and a file explorer. And then you can just drag your YouTube video into this input area right here. Or you could just select on select input. And then for output, you can put wherever you want to put the output. So what I'm going to actually do in this case is go to AI voice cloning, head to voices, and then I'm going to create a new folder called me. And then I'm going to drag me into the output here. So uh, drag me into output and that's going to change the output of the folder and then the input. So next thing you want to do is make sure it's a WAV file. So WAV, you can leave all of these here and I'm just going to do vocals only and then click on start processing. So you want to make sure this is on GPU conversion as this will, the speed of this will depend on your GPU. So it may take some time depending on what um, graphics card you have. All right. So for me, that took about half a minute to get that extracted. And then if we head to the me folder, we'll have a WAV file with the vocals extracted. Oh God, let's have it again. Um, and so, yeah, this is me. So cool. If you follow along in concept inside of the voices folder, you should have a name. Um, and inside of that folder, you should have some type of wave file or some type of um, training data file. The longer it is, the longer training is going to take. So with that, what you want to do is head to generate. You want to click on refresh voice list, and that's going to now allow us to select the data source. So I'm going to select on me. And then I'm going to leave it at English because it's English. Leave all these parameters the same. And then in here, I'm going to change whisper to large V2. And if you have less VRAM, you would want to select medium or base. Or if you want it to run faster, you can use base or medium. But in this case, I'm going to do large V2. If you do want it to be a little bit faster, what you can also do is change it to whisper X and then use large V2 for Whisper X. But this is going to concur an additional download that is about three gigabytes large for um, models. And so if you choose to do Whisper X, which is actually much faster, it's going to be inside of models. And then a new uh, folder called Hugging Face is going to be created in this models area with that Whisper X um, model inside of it. But, but I'm going to head on back over to Whisper um, and then the ones that are available are the ones that are inside of AI voice cloning models and then whisper. And that is large V2, medium and small. If you do choose to use any of these other ones, um, it will download those into that folder. The reason that I omitted them was to make the download for the package a little bit smaller. With that little explanation, click on transcribe and process. And with that, it's going to now create us a data set. So let's just wait for this to finish up. As you can see, the progress bar is slowly going along. Um, this may take longer depending on how large your file is. And this would be a little bit faster if you were using Whisper X. Alrighty. And so we are finished here. Um, and one quick check we want to do is head on over into the AI voice cloning folder and where your data set and curation is going to be um, put into is a new folder called training. If you go into training, you'll now see the name of the folder matching the one that you put into voices. If you go into here, you will have uh, three files, train validation and whisper JSON, along with audio. And here are all of the split audios. Once we've confirmed that we do have files in here, uh, we can now head on over to generate configuration. So this is the configuration for training. Uh, what we're going to do is opt to put epochs at, let's say 200. We're going to leave learning rate the same here. I'm going to leave male learning rate ratio the same here. And then that text LR as well. For learning rate scheme, I'm going to select cosine annealing. So that's going to enable learning restarts during the training. And for batch size, um, I'm just going to let it figure it out on its own. So the next important one is save frequency. So this tells the model how, how often, how frequently it should save it. And so basically what an epoch is, is one run through the entire data set. So if you have 100 data samples, for the model to see all 100 samples, that is equivalent to one epoch. And so in this case, I want to save every 40 epochs to save a little bit on disk space. And I'll show you why a little bit later. 
and all of these other things you can leave the same um, and then in this case you want to click on refresh data set list and then click on this um, text box here and then click on the name for the data set that you have. So now we're going to do validate training configuration. And as you can see, the batch size kind of changed on its own. But this is actually probably going to throw an error. What you want to make sure is batch size is evenly di uh, divisible by gradient accumulation size. So I'm going to do something along the lines of 80 and 20. Uh, 80 is divi divisible by 20. You get four. So that'll work. You just want to make sure that there's no remainder. So once we validate uh, con training configuration, we can now do save training configuration. So that is important. Do make sure that your batch size is divisible by the gradient accumulation size, or you may run into an error when you're training. I believe it's something along the lines of index out of range, but I forget. All right. Now with save training configuration, you can head into run training, go to refresh configurations, and then select your train YAML. And now all you need to do is head to train and click on the train button. So on the right hand side here, you have a loss graph. And the important thing here is that it's continually decreasing. And so just a quick rundown on what this graph means. In general, the lower the value, the better the model. So let's wait 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to have the model finish training and then I'll do a little bit more explaining. So training is done. And so what I was talking about earlier is the lower points on the top graph here um, usually indicate the better model to take a listen to. And as you can see, it was decreasing the entire time. And at, at the end, we have uh, Epoch 200. Um, so if you want to find where those models are, if you go over into the training tab, um, once again, that's inside of AI voice cloning training inside of the name that you have here, it's inside of fine tune and then models. Um, so these are pretty hefty. They are about 1.5 gigabytes, 1.6 gigabytes each. And so um, to save space, what I generally like to do is just delete these last ones or the first couple of models as generally they are lower quality. I say generally uh, because um, sometimes they can be higher quality than the later epochs. That is what would be classified as overtraining, but I don't see it happen too often. And then training states, um, I just delete all of the training states. So that leaves me with a total of 1.6 gigabytes for a trained voice. And there's one thing that you want to do after training before we actually use the model. And that is to take away the audio files um, and put them somewhere else so that we don't end up creating a latent for all of those audio files. That may result in inference taking a very long time. Create a new folder and let's call this backup. And we're going to copy and paste everything that's in this folder into backup. So it should look like fine tune and then backup. With that inside of backup, um, I'm going to sort by size here. And then I'm just going to grab um, two audio files from here because these are split. This is a 15 second audio file. And actually, that is a little bit too long. So I want to take a listen to some of these. And these are about nine seconds, about 429 kilobytes. And so what I want to do is copy these. And this is going to be the same thing as what we did earlier with the Melina voice. We're going to head over into voices. And then inside of me, which is the name that I used, I'm going to delete the original training file. This is the one that all of those audio samples got cut from. I'm going to delete that. And now what I'm going to do is paste in those two short samples. So this process is very important. Um, so make sure that you follow it along here if you want to use your custom models. We can now head on over and use that trained model. And in this case, let's head to settings. And we want to click on refresh model list down here. So click on refresh model list. And then inside of auto regressive model, you can now select the fine tune that you have here. So I select me. And then once you have that selected, uh, you want to click on reload TTS. So click on reload TTS. All right. So TTS is now loaded. And inside of um, voice here, we can now select on me and then just run inference for this again. So I do have hi fi GAN and deep speed enabled. So I'm going to click on generate. Um, it's going to create the latents first, and then it's going to create the audio sample. So let's go ahead, regenerate just to see how fast it actually is with latents already computed. And it's about three seconds. Let's take a listen. This is a cloned version of my voice. And then gaze at him with scorn and contempt as Subaru 
praised them. As Subaru praised them, they appeared to be in their mid-20s. All right, so that was pretty terrible. But once again, this isn't a um, video on how to get the best training model. It's just how to train a model um, real quick. And so if I did want to increase the quality of that training, uh, what I would do is I would curate the data set and then I would probably run the training for a little bit longer. So um, I might do 500 in this case uh, because the amount of data that I was training it on was about nine minutes. What I generally do is about an hour of data I will train for 200 or so epochs. But all of that is a lot of experimentation and whatnot for, um, for voices. So. And so I do have a video on how to make better models inside of Tortoise TTS, where I go through some of the um, so to me, that's just... the training that I did. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot that goes into this. So you may have to experiment quite a bit. And if you run into any issues, the easiest way for me to track what issues you're running into is head on over into the GitHub for the AI voice cloning, go into issues and then click on new issue and then create a new issue. So describe your um, issue with a nice title and then try to give me as much information in the description as possible. I don't have a template here, but if I need to make one, I will. There will be small minor adjustments maybe here and there, but I don't plan on actively working or improving this project. I just want to make sure that it is alive. Alrighty, and that is it. Once again, this isn't my repository. Originally, it was by a guy named MRQ, but he seems to be inactive. And so I went ahead and re-uploaded it onto my GitHub to make sure that these tutorials can still stay alive and that people can still use the Tortoise TTS model. If you have any questions, comments, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, once again, thank you to my members for supporting the channel and helping me out. But if you found anything useful, have any questions, comment down below, like, subscribe, all of those things, and I will see you all later in a future video and catch you later.